in this video, I'm going to explain you why it still makes sense to stick to minoxidil even if it didn't work for you in its topical form. So let's talk about the pros and cons of oral minoxidil. This video is brought to you by GoFiber Hair Building Fibers. Pick up your free sample and get instant hair confidence. Start your transformation today. So let's start with the advantages. The oral minoxidil advantage number one, something that the topical minoxidil doesn't have is the way it's converting the inactive ingredient minoxidil into its active form minoxidil sulfate. And minoxidil sulfate, the active metabolite of minoxidil, is actually responsible for all these benefits that minoxidil is known for in the hair loss community or for treating androgenic alopecia. So if you have a very low activity of sulfotransferase in your hair follicles, that means it's not converting enough minoxidil into minoxidil sulfate and thus you don't see any results. So how to find a way around that? Well, oral minoxidil. If you take oral minoxidil, and we'll talk about the dosages also, if you take oral minoxidil, it's gonna be metabolized by the liver. And the liver is gonna take care of the conversion from minoxidil into the minoxidil sulfate. And minoxidil sulfate is gonna find its way from the inside to the hair follicle that way. The efficacy of oral minoxidil as far as hair thickening and faster hair growth has been observed especially by taking 0.25 to 1.25 milligram by women and especially the vertex area has shown a really really good improvement by men who are taking uh, between 2.5 milligram to 5 milligram of oral minoxidil per day. And one last major advantage of oral minoxidil would be the improvement of long-term compliance with the therapy. And by that I simply mean that you are going to be able to respond to it well also over longer periods of time as opposed to topical minoxidil. All right guys, here are the two main disadvantages of using oral minoxidil in androgenic alopecia, alopecia areata or post chemotherapy alopecia. These are the areas where uh, there clearly are some studies, but they are very small, maybe 40 to 150 subjects included over a period of six to 12 months. Many of these studies were cohorts or observational studies. So there's a clear lack of a properly conducted randomized control trial with a larger sample size, of course, that should be conducted on this topic of using uh, oral minoxidil in androgenic alopecia. So that would be the disadvantage number one. The second disadvantage of oral minoxidil would be that it's basically inducing its hair elongation and hair hair thickening effects on the whole body, okay? It's not gonna be just topically as it is the case by topical minoxidil. With the oral minoxidil, it's gonna happen on the whole body. So things like hypertrichosis, which is excessive body hair growth can be expected. And it has been shown in many studies, it can be an issue for women, although it could be also mitigated by use of spironolactone, 25 to 50 milligrams per day, which should be used uh, together with oral minoxidil. And there are some studies on that. I'm gonna be talking about that uh, in the next or next next episode. Now since minoxidil is known for being a vasodilator and it's being used for treating high blood pressure, uh, there could be side effects like low blood pressure clearly since it's like uh, pushing your blood pressure down. Other common side effects could be increased heart rate, uh, swelling on hands and legs, fluid retention which also has been shown in some studies. I'm gonna talk about that in another video or in another episode of this series and also alterations in electrocardiogram that has been also, sh also shown. So if you are a person who is suffering uh, from heart issues, uh, blood pressure issues, please consult it with your cardiologist. Probably you will not be suitable for oral minoxidil treatment. Also consult it with your dermatologist. I mean, even if you are healthy, if your heart is functioning fine, make sure you consult it with uh, the dermatologist. But more about these uh, things and studies that are kind of talking about these side effects in another episode. But at the end of the day, it's going to be pretty much dose dependent and all these side effects, as it is the case with finasteride, that's why we are microdosing finasteride. That's why it's going to make sense to microdose oral minoxidil as well. And that's what I'm going to be talking about in uh, the episode two or number three. All right, that was it for the episode number one of the oral minoxidil series. In the second episode, we are going to be talking about different dosages of oral minoxidil for men and women and observe their clinical efficacy and also side effect profile in much more detail than we did in this video. And we're gonna take a look what could be like the optimal dose for you if you are a man or if you are a woman, something that could give you a good um, clinical benefits but limit the exposure to the side effects as much as possible. So we're gonna be talking about microdosing also, okay? So that was it for this episode and see you in the episode number two.